Hello traders everywhere, Adam Hewison here, president of INO.com and co-creator of Market Club with your video market update for Thursday the 14th of February. Happy Valentine's Day and for those husbands and boyfriends be sure to uh, get something nice for your loved one for this evening. Anyway, we're looking at George Soros, how he made another billion dollars in the Forex markets. Also looking at Bill Ackman and his feud and vendetta against Herbalife and also why we can call Warren Buffett the ketchup king. Okay, let's get started right away. We've got some big markets to cover, some big moves. And we'll be looking at the yen against the dollar, the big move it's shown, how we would have fared with our trade triangles. And also we're gonna be looking at Herbalife and also H.J. Hines. So let's start with the yen. So as you can see, everything's a plus 100, so it's a strong trend, a plus 90. You can see the market's a little pullback today, but it's been a very strong upward move. So let's take a look at seeing, look at this trend. Look at this trend. So you can see on the monthlies from 80.09, it's 93. This is a huge, huge move in Forex. It's one of the biggest moves you're going to see. Usually if Forex moves 5% a year, it's a huge move. And this has happened just in a period of maybe three months. So it's a huge move. If we scope this out even further, you can see there's the weekly, which is our first buy point at 79.01. You see it right here. And you can see that we've never let up. Now, we recommend with our, you can use the weekly and the monthly. If you're super long term, just use the monthly because it's very accurate. And this is a nice move up. And you can see, so we get in here and the market's here. And you can see the profit is ginormous because all the guys like Soros and everybody else, they use leverage that's how they make the billion dollars so he may have only put up a hundred million dollars to make a billion that's what's the magic of leverage of course it's a two-edged sword so yes you could have made the same money as Soros had you put up a hundred if you had to put up a hundred million dollars and purchased using the trade triangles it's a huge move very 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 positive and very good so let's move on and look at our next market and that's going to be an interesting one, this has been a feud between um, Bill Ackman, who's the hedge fund manager, and also Herbalife. And you can see, basically, if we just put our monthlies in, you can see it's been under a lot of pressure. Let's scope this out just a bit further. The monthly kicked in right here, and it has never changed. 57.33, it's 37.46. Bill Ackman's saying this is a pyramid scheme. Uh, for sales, all the sales are bogus and it's a pyramid scheme. It's minus 75, so the trend is clearly down here. So the trend based on our trade triangles is actually down. This is both of them right here. Actually, it's just to go that way and that way. They're both going down. So the reality is, how long is this move going to take? Is it going to, are we going to see Herbalife go out of business? Possibly, I don't know. But the reality is, the trend is your friend and the trend is down and has been down for, for quite some time, certainly from the monthlies back here and the last weekly came in around 35, probably around this level right here, we're 37.48. So if you wanted to go short, this would probably be an area to look to go short in, maybe give it maybe a move up to 40 and a stop over here. I think if it moved over this level here, I think uh, that would be a sign that this market's turned back up. But nonetheless, it's a big feud. Uh, we were a little oversold, like right here and right here. We rallied back up. So we could back go back to the 40, 45 area. But I think, uh, generally speaking, the trend is down. But we have been very, very flat here. And I know Mr. Ackman, Bill Ackman from uh, Pershing Square Capital, wants to see the SEC investigate this stock. It's really become a vendetta. So let's just clear the screen off and go to our next market. And this uh what I'm calling King Ketchup, that's Warren Buffett. He purchased H.J. Hines, which is obviously one of the most famous brands in the world. And you can see the market move right here. The monthly got in at 54. It's currently trading at 72. And you can see the big, big jump in prices. So again, the, that's the last price there right here. You can see, barely see it because boom, it just came up. But you can see the monthly go back. Uh, let me scope this. I just clear this up and just go back a bit. You will see, so I can show you how far back we go in this market. So there's the monthly right there, and that's the uh, 
September 27th, 2000, excuse me, October uh, 27th, 2011 at 54.31. So it's been a steady progression and it looks as though it wants to continue going higher. Obviously, it's a takeover. They purchased it for $28 billion, I think 23 and then they assumed $5 billion in cash, and they're doing this with 3G, which is a Brazilian company that is a majority stakeholder in Burger King. So looks like Kinkek Chip is going to be a Warren Buffett as he, another, he amasses another major brand, uh, major position in a brand. So let's see how that goes. So let's go to our regular markets and see what's going on there because there's lots going on there. The one thing that's really interesting is the crude oil continues to move higher. It really is a uh, market that, uh, let's just put the close only chart. You can see it's really sort of backing up against this 98 level. I think we're going to see this. There's enough energy here from 96 to 98 to push it to 100, which I think has been our target to 100 to 103 has been our target zone. And the trend you can see on the monthly kicked in right here. And if we put the weeklies in, you can see that kicked in even earlier at 92.05 on December 26. So we've had a nice move already in this market. It looks like the trade triangles are really, really doing well. And we expect this trend to continue higher. So let's go to our next market. That's gold. Not the same story for gold. Gold is a very interesting level right here. 41.39. And why I say it's an interesting level, if you go back here to the lowest close you see in gold, that was in December 20th, and that was 341.74, so it's very, very close to this previous low. We do not want to see gold close below this low as it would not be a good sign. Generally speaking, the key to gold, in my humble opinion, is this trend line right here. If you look at this trend line, it's like picture perfect. You don't get a more beautiful picture than you have right here. So there's the all the areas touching, and that's the key. If we go, if we group here somewhere like this and go through this line, just extend that line out like that, then that's going to be a buy. But for now, this market is on the defensive with all of the arrows, excuse me, all the trade triangles, minus 100, that's a negative sign. The trend is your friend, we're going lower. So let's go clear the screen and go to our next market. And the next market we're going to be looking at in this case is going to be the euro against the dollar now the euro against the dollar we've been bullish on this it's obviously under defensive today but uh, we still have our trade triangles only the daily ones kicked in at 33.58 133.58 it's 133.40 very close to those levels now we're back in an oversold condition i think the support should come into this market in my opinion right around these levels so i think we're very close to support and I think that's going to be a key. Now, we may be making a potential top like this. It's too early to tell, but I think the key level is to look to see if we have this market move over this, this area, what I would consider this area right here. If we break through that trend line on the upside, then I think we've got something going. So let's see how that plays out, but we are very, very oversold, and I think that's very similar to these periods here and here and here. So I would not be pressing the market necessarily at this point in time. Tricky market right now. So let's go to our next market. That's going to be the S&P 500. And uh, here you see new highs on the S&P 500. Oh, should I say not who new highs, but this is we're trading 1521. Remember, we've been looking for this market to go to 1550. We've been saying that ever since we went through this level back here at 1470 so we've been right and we continue to think this the bull market's in trend you can see it's just steadily 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 creeping up we've got the sequester on march 1st what's going to happen there is no one's i don't know what's going to happen there so let's not even worry about it right now but the trend is your friend the trend is clearly up and it'll be up until it starts going down and we haven't got there yet so let's stay with our positions on that one same thing on the dow the dow is still in a bull market and uh, you can see a little bit of a defensive play today we have our one market uh trade triangle in a red that's the daily not a lot of uh we didn't put a lot of stock into that the main ones are the monthly and the weekly the weekly right here and the monthly right here so we're definitely bullish on that looks like it can go higher we're looking at the Level we're looking at 13,600, uh, 14,600 on this market. Uh, 14,000 obviously is a big psychological barrier. A little bit of concern here is with the negative divergence coming in on this 
uh, particular indicator, that's the Williams percent R. Now, a negative divergence, I'll show you what that means very quickly, is usually a, ne a negative divergence is like this. You make new highs like this, so that would be new highs, and the momentum, it does not follow. Okay, so that's the key thing there. The momentum did not make new highs, so and it's gone below these levels here, so that's a little bit of a concern. It's a little breakdown in the momentum and the upside, so we could see a pullback possibly to these levels back here, then it would probably represent a buying opportunity. Then maybe this request is going to push it back. So let's see what happens there. So let's just clear the screen and go back to our next market. This is the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is clearly going to be dependent on what Apple does. So this area right here, it hasn't really cleared this area here in a convincing fashion. So if you just look at the resistance right here and where we are right now, it really hasn't, boom, it hasn't gone through it like in a really positive fashion. So I would say, generally speaking, this is the, even though it's a plus 100, the trend is your friend, and the trend is up, it's still going to have some teething to do to get through this area. So let's just clear the screen. Uh, a couple of markets I want to bring to your attention. We talked about these uh, markets a couple of weeks ago. One was Amazon and one was Walmart. We said buy Amazon, sell Walmart. Now I'm saying that not because the markets are going our way particularly today, but this is the way the trade is happening. And I show you the key thing here to me, we'll be talking about this in different sectors next week, but here's the monthly right here. And automatically you see a difference. Walmart is Walmart is on a downswing like this. And Amazon is on an upswing based on the monthlies alone. Okay, and even today we're up 0.29%. So that's a plus right there. And let me put that back here. And we're down in the uh Walmart uh, 0.63, so that's the that's the uh, that's the thing to look at. So we're down point, so it's a negative. This is a plus. This is down 0.63. That's percent. And if you remember, we talked about this about gosh a week or two ago, maybe longer, about buying Amazon, selling Walmart based on just the differential. We felt Walmart's old school, Amazon's new school. The technology of Amazon's going to beat out Walmart. Walmart employs. 1% of the American workforce, 1.4 million people, and quite frankly, their overhead is huge, whereas Amazon's much more dynamic, robotic, and profitable. So let's see how that works out. I'm Adam Hewison from Market Club. I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll be talking about what's in the news, what's moving, and how you can make money using our trade triangle. So I'll see you then. Have a great trading day.